I live alone. So I went from being working in an office to spending eight hours a day in my van and then got home and shut in the front door. I have a, a son lives in Newton Ards and I have a one year old grandson, AJ, and we must see him and stuff like that there. You know, you're, you are juggling that home life, you're, you're juggling your work priorities, um, and it hasn't been without its difficulties. It started off in March last year. Uh, first week was pretty quiet. I think people were kind of staying at home. And then when they realized they needed their exercise, then they, they came out under the parks and there was definitely bigger numbers on the park. You see the whole way along here, there's there's clay, there's you know, there's garden waste, there's building waste, and this is one of the the, 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 the worst areas for this. Now this isn't you don't you don't get as much food waste or household waste here. It tends to be garden waste and building waste and that, and it's just unsightly. There's no consideration at all for the the countryside that they live in. Having had COVID myself. I know it was very difficult to try and get myself back on track. You know, you want to feel like you're doing something. So every wee bit that I could do to make me feel, you know, that I was helping out at work, helping out the city, I was just glad to be able to do. When the recycling centres opened again, uh, it opened with restrictions, so obviously it was, it was social distancing and so it was less cars on site. So there was queues, sometimes up to an hour long, and when people got out of the vehicles, sometimes they did express that to us. But we had to, you know, just calm them down and try to explain to them that it was keeping people safe and it kept us safe and it kept the public safe. And the recycling centre was stayed open because we didn't get sick. The team were very apprehensive. There was a lot of questions. There was a lot of briefing, so there was, but uh, again, the, the fear as well, but they did step up to the mark. You know, they know, a lot of them are very experienced grave diggers, and uh, they knew what they had to do, you know, and they just went ahead and done it, just got on with the job. So when it initially happened, we had to close the cemetery to uh, everybody, the public, and we were only limited to six members of a family. The, um, that were permitted to a funeral, right? And it was extremely hard to keep our members outside the gate. No matter how hard you are or how you used to it, you know, it was very hard. You know, you were taking that home me. We do get abuse, we do. Um, my colleague Rona, she took a lot of abuse last week. On a telephone call from a gentleman who had dumped stuff outside his house and we warned him that we would, we would fine him if he didn't move it. Uh, he didn't move it so we moved it and then he gave Rona abuse and threatened her, uh, accused her of stealing his stuff, yet it had been lying on the street outside his house for nearly a year. Some areas the litter, because people are in lockdown, there obviously no work. So there's been a lot of litter in the streets. There's been a lot of litter as well where people is building it up at home because there's so many people not working at the minute. So their bins is obviously getting full up quicker and they tend to dump the rubbish then, you know, on sites where then we come along then and we obviously have to clean it up. There's been a lot of places where we would go out and people are walking their dogs and as with the lockdown that was the one part of exercise that they were allowed just to take the dog a walk and there was people that was using that as an excuse you know just to go out a walk or whatever and the amount of dog fouling was just oh, it, 
more or less tripled. And you wonder why, you know, people wouldn't just carry a bag. There's plenty of dog bins about. I've been on maternity leave. I had a child last last March, so it's been a bit hard for me. Plus, as well, I've only returned back to work um, uh, December uh, last year, so I've missed some of it. But as a mother, it has been quite challenging. Uh, plus, a different role for myself because I'm normally uh, a work. No, I work all the time. But being a new mum now, it's been quite difficult. Um, my child now, he's one, and within the pandemic, I all I had to stay at home and it was just me and him. My partner works full time as well, so it was just me and him at the house. Don't get me wrong, the bonding was fantastic, but I had no adult chat with anyone else. I couldn't go out and take him to the park, couldn't go to the doctors, I had to ring and send pictures. Um, just everything was totally different. And I did feel entra trapped within my house because you have to stay in your bubble and be safe. Mentally, mentally, it was quite hard for myself. I think our achievements really speak for themselves throughout the pandemic. We have been able to process a significant number of major applications and key development sites within the Dairy and Strabane district and within the city itself. And some of these that have been processed to completion throughout the last year would include the, a major social housing development on the former Adria factory site in Strabane, a retail application for the relocation of Luddle on Boncrana Road, there was a major development proposal for the redevelopment of Sean Dolan's GAA club and 120 social housing units on lands adjacent to that in the Craigan. We have processed a major extension to Seagate and four IT data centres in Maydown, as well as some private major housing developments such as 400 houses and the H30 sites at the Car Roundabout. It's been busy, it's been hectic because we've been working in the recovery fund. Um, it's just trying to make safe spaces for the public when they, to get back out and enjoy and to bring a bit of vitality back to the city centre. So we've been doing that on top of trying to manage the previous projects that we would have had on board as well. This site here we're standing on is the site of the old Condermott High School. Um, so this was a disused site for quite a number of years as part of a cross-community initiative between the top of the hill and the Irish Street community. Um, we had num numerous discussions with them with what they would like to have on this site, a shared community development where the two communities could come together, both benefit and work together in a relatively deprived area which hasn't had much funding over the last number of years. So this site contains uh, a community hub building. The, the, the building includes a multi-use hall. The building also contains a kitchen area for community use, a meeting spaces, offices and a reception area. And as well as that then it also has uh, changing facilities for, for use by the external sports facilities which will be also provided on the site. We have had a very busy year in the last year. We've delivered about 12 million pounds worth of projects on site. And these range from a number of community centres, a large number of play parks, uh, greenways. Uh, there's a real plethora of different types of projects. I've sort of recently just done a, an appraisal of the last financial year and was somewhat taken aback, as I say, by the volume of work we actually managed to get. Uh, as I say, we completed 12 million pounds worth of work on site. Uh, we got about another £10 million worth of projects started on site, such as this. 
and in the meantime as well we've kept about 34 or 35 million pounds worth of projects moving through the various phases, planning, design, tender, etc. Well, I suppose really um, a lot of work we've done with, with the recovery programme has been uh, an achievement because we've managed to uh, do a lot really to help support businesses, working with our colleagues obviously in other um, parts of the council within the business and culture directorate and also trying to sort of, uh, I suppose, bring that confidence back and really also use our built heritage as well as another beautiful way of, of celebrating what we have around us. To be honest, COVID has been um, a really good eye-opener for us as a council. You know, we're not doing as much business travel, we're not all commuting in and out of work every day, there's less people in the office. So all of those things in themselves are reducing our carbon footprint as a council. So that's a good thing um, and it will lead to new ways of working. And it's also thinking if we're developing a new asset for council or a new project, how can we design and build that project so that it has more green infrastructure, more natural things within it, um, more trees, etc. Um, that will help, obviously, um, the people who are using that space make it more pleasant, but will also support our biodiversity, keeping that footprint as low as we can so we're not contributing emissions into the, the atmosphere. So it has been a very busy year. It has been difficult because people have been really, really scared. So we've had a lot of work to do to make sure that people are safe and that staff safety and welfare has come first throughout the whole pandemic. It's been a year like no other, that's for sure. 